Nobody, but nobody, wishes they were in the land of Tom Cotton, no matter what the song says. Least of all, CNN's Caitlin Collins, who absolutely schooled the senator from Arkansas on the difference between religious freedom and individual rights. Now, it's true that the only reason Tom Cotton shows up on CNN is to spread misinformation in a corn pone schoolboy way that can give misogyny, white privilege, and medieval social views a clean-cut look. Cotton is also a master at sending up more dog whistles for conservative voters than a mail carrier's convention in the heart of Tennessee coon hunting season. But don't let Senator Country Boy fool you. He's an East Coast Harvard-educated elite. And Cotton certainly has his job cut out for him trying to hold the line on reproductive issues when the head of the Republican Party flip-flops daily on both abortion and IVF. Now, both Cotton and J.D. Vance are anti-IVF as part of a broader agenda of control and regulation of women, but also as a way to keep right-wing Catholics voting for the Republican Party. That explains why the supposed pro-life party is opposed to IVF. Ironically, these same right-wing Catholics support the death penalty, even though the church is unequivocally opposed to the death penalty. It's almost like they're cafeteria Catholics. Hmm. And as we'll see in this video, Cotton was absolutely catering to right-wing Catholics, throwing out more bones than a bone broth factory the day before garbage pickup. For her part, Collins was having none of Cotton's ginning up the lies. It's true she's not mastered the art of slamming a liar like Cotton. She's no Anderson Cooper or Lawrence O'Donnell, but she isn't exactly Dana Bash either. She's just woefully inexperienced, and you can just tell by her facial expressions that when the BS starts flowing her way, her disbelief and incredulity take over and get in the way of her dropping the hammer and the facts. She's like the second string quarterback who you are never quite sure of in terms of being able to throw the deep ball in clutch situations. And it's fine when she goes up against Republican second stringers like Tom Cotton, who you know corporate Republican snobs like J.D. Vance look down their nose at. But still, you'd just love to see Collins master the body slam, the cold, calculating, cut their mic so I can cut them to shreds move that will make them think twice about going up against her with their homespun misinformation. So her latest interview with Cotton may not have been a body slam, but she certainly checked him right into the boards. Take a look. It infringes upon religious liberties, which again shouldn't be surprising because the Democrats are the party that want to harass and persecute nuns or investigate Catholics for going to traditional masses. That's why we oppose that bill and will continue to oppose it. But Senator, this bill would have guaranteed access to IVF, and you're saying that it would have forced people to, to do things against uh, their religious beliefs. I should note, this bill doesn't require anyone to, to perform any operations or procedures. It just says that people should have access to IVF. And it also talks about having insurance companies cover the cost for fertility treatments, something that your candidate supports. So just to be clear, I'm not misrepresenting the bill. You can say you don't like it. You can say that you think it's a show vote. You can talk about those aspects of it. But this is something that was put up there, and it would have guaranteed access to IVF. So you'll notice that Cotton leads with religious liberty, the issue that this overly biased Supreme Court uses to make religious bigotry and exclusion the law of the land. But then Cotton goes into a complete fantasy world of religious persecution designed to keep right-wing Catholics away from the Democratic Party by claiming the Democratic Party wants to persecute nuns. Persecute nuns? Clearly, Cotton doesn't really know any nuns, most of whom lean hard left. It's also clear he's never heard of nuns on the bus, an advocacy group that pushes a progressive agenda. And then there's his line that the Democratic Party wants to investigate Catholics who want to go to traditional masses. By that, he means the Latin mass. Is it possible that Cotton is trying to out Pope Francis for being a Democrat? Because if you want to know who actually is investigating Catholics going to traditional masses, that's the Vatican. 
ever since the Pope issued this apostolic letter, Traditionis Custodis, in July of 2021, the traditional Latin Mass has been limited by the Roman Catholic Church and can only be allowed by the local bishop in consultation with the Vatican. The Vatican wants to know precisely who keeps on insisting not being in communion with the rest of the Catholic Church. So unless Cotton is trying to say that Democrats are actually Vatican spies, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And he doesn't, as Collins makes clear. But kudos to Caitlin Collins for getting past all that subterfuge and dog whistles to get at the real issue. Republicans oppose the bill to guarantee IVF, not on moral grounds, but on more traditional Republican values, sucking up to corporate interests. As Collins points out, the bill that Senate Republicans killed would require insurance companies to pay for IVF treatments, which are expensive. Leave that up to the free market and you'll soon get a very clear picture about how there is no free market in healthcare. So yes, tell me again why we don't want to expand Medicare to more people. The Republican Party is all about getting people to vote against their own self-interest and for corporate interest instead. Collins decided to throw a rock at that smoke and mirrors show and see what comes crashing down. She may not know how to throw a haymaker yet, but she certainly knows how to stick and move. And she does a good job of setting an example for everyday Democrats going out there and trying to talk to everyday voters. Get past the smoke and mirrors that Republicans hide behind and get to their real motives, which are always about empowering corporations and the 1%. This November is a great opportunity to go out and change the balance of power with a blue tsunami. The only question is, will we work hard enough to make that happen? I'm Anthony Vincent Gallo for Occupy Democrats.